Hello and welcome to today's partner web conference. This is Fast Track Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations Enterprise Edition Tech Talk. Today's topic, demand replenishment for raw material picking. Presenting with us today from Microsoft, we have Mirza Abdich, who is a senior program manager. Now it's my pleasure to hand you over. Mirza, you now have the floor. Okay, thank you everyone. Um, my pleasure is to present this uh, functionality for you today that we have um, delivered or created recently and we will go through the deck first and at the end of the PowerPoint slides we will go into the one of the test machines and, and go uh, and look where to set up this feature and how it works and then at the end we will advertise for some of our main blocks, uh, blocks and, um, and the material, learning material sites. And then I will be open for questions, of course, and try to answer as many questions as you have. So my name is Mirza, and I'm working in the warehousing and distribution team from Copenhagen, which is a development center for supply chain and logistics. And uh, this feature, it's about warehouse operations, uh, which means that the way that we do demand and replenishment and now has been enabled for raw material picking. So let's start. Um, first slide basically describes how today's presentation will be divided and we have uh, selected four steps. So we have about demand replenishment for raw material picking where we will cover the challenge that was uh, solved and how we have solved it. Where does it apply? So where it applies means that we will uh, tell where does it apply in the system, uh, what is supported. And I have uh, decided to today to expand my session with another, a little bit of another topic just to give you a goodie. And um, it's, of course, related to uh, replenishment itself. That's why I selected to tell you about it. So we will go to that one, through that one as well, see where it is set up and uh, where it applies as well. Uh, and then we will go into the demo mode, uh, logging in one of the machines and seeing the demo of, the, of these features that will be presented today. So let's start. Um, well, the first we will be talking about demand replenishment as such uh, for raw material picking and for the other processes like sales demand, so which means sales order picking and uh, transfer order picking and so on. So the outbound logistics where we have picking procedure uh, will sometimes require materials to be replenish into the picking locations in order to be picked and delivered to a customer or to another warehouse facility if we are talking about transfer orders and such. So we have two types of replenishment into system as you probably know today which is a we have basically three but two main are mean and max replenishment and demand replenishment. Uh, our customers are using mean and max replenishment as a kind of batch based process which means that normally usually it's once a day or somebody it's also running it more often the mean and max minimum and maximum replenishment will basically assess the selection of the locations or a complete warehouse if you set it that way but that's rarely a case and then look at the location level what material levels are there and what needs to be replenished it works for the fixed location, it works for the variance, it works for the items, it works also for empty locations, but then you need to set up the fixed locations in order to run empty locations. That's the part that we call mean and max replenishment. So it's basically, we should talk about use case, it could be in the morning when we are in the supermarket, when the shelves are replenished before supermarket opens, normally it's based on such a replenishment, basically making sure that shelves are ready uh, with, the, with the items needed throughout the day as much as possible so people can pick, pick the items and buy them. So each of the items will be replenished on its location to the certain level of quantity uh, that is run by the mean and max. However, this topic that we're covering today, it's not about mean and max replenishment, it is about demand replenishment. And I would like to emphasize that demand replenishment is an exception and it occurs when demand cannot create work for picking on the range of the locations that has been set up in the workflow of the warehouse through the location directives where we usually set up where to look at where we want to pick. If that fails at the end of the wave there will be a method called we will see that in the demo called demand replenishment and that method when everything fails to allocate through the location directives all of the steps lines and actions we have set up like look first in this aisle if 
it, if it cannot find the item, look in the second aisle, and so on, so on. Uh, then, if the replenishment method has been added to the wave, then it will say, okay, now the last, uh, last, last thing we can do is to try to replenish this location and then unfreeze the demand, uh, basically, to to be able to be picked. Uh, however, this demand replenishment, uh, when I say it is an exception, uh, we have seen the customers are setting this more like a rule than exception, and that's wrong in our minds, because um, if you have a lot of demand replenishment going on throughout the day, that takes time, because every time demand replenishment is created, it's basically requiring a physical movement of items from an location X to a location Y, uh, which is a place where we are picking from. That is time consumption, and we know that everything in the warehouse that has with the consumption of time equals consumption of money. Uh, and, and that means that we are kind of costing the system unnecessary. So we need to minimize amounts of the demand replenishment, if possible, through the bigger sizes of the locations, maybe having a more than one fixed location, and so on, so on, or replenishing with a bigger unit of measures, like a pallets, uh, and so on. But uh, we cannot avoid, in the many circumstances, to run the demand replenishment. That could be that we have deviations in demand. Suddenly, one day, we have advertised for something, and then we receive more orders than usually. Of course, we don't have time to change our physical layout, so we might uh, be solving these exceptions through the demand replenishment flow. The demand replenishment was able to be on outbound uh, documents, so transfer orders, and we had uh, sales orders but we did not have it for the raw material picking. And as described here in the challenge uh, part of the chapter, uh, a wave template could not be constructed for raw material picking, and the demand replenishment method could not be added for production orders in Kanban. This lack of functionality resulted in uh, basically quite manual uh, solution uh, for the materials that cannot be picked from the dedicated, from the location that you have set up through the location directives, which means a workflow for picking. So they will simply fail. And when the demand replenishment, it's not able to be set, then you don't have any other choice than to go and manually add the lines that failed from the pool uh, for raw material picking into the new wave or existing open wave, and then run the wave manually again. Um, unless you have done some customization. That was not that lean, and it was quite uh, basically, it, it was not good that we did not support all the nice things that we have around demand replenishment for the raw material picking as well, which includes production orders and canvans for the lean manufacturing. Well, we have now decided to solve that, and in your spring release, you have this functionality, and uh, probably you ask yourself, will it be backported? Yes, all of the functionality that we have released or most of it for the uh, spring release. We will try to backport, but we cannot give you any exact time. We are right now working on the backporting, so it will be available and announced. Um, but to go back to the solution, now we have a wave template for the raw material picking, both the production order type and the Kanban. That can be uh, uh, added method called demand replenishment, and it works exactly the same and has same capabilities as we have seen for the sales uh, demand, replen demand replenishment, which means that we can have unreserved quantities set, and what is that? Uh, to use unreserved quantities, as you know, on the replenishment template, we can set up the small checkbox to use unreserved quantities. So if we decide to move pallet at the time, but we are only, but demand that has kicked the demand replenishment and the movement of that pallet, it's less than a pallet, then we want, if the new demand comes, to allocate from that pallet, even if it is not moved yet from that work, so we don't create a new pallet movement with no reason. That's what this option is, and it will also work for the demand replenishment as such, so there is no any difference. We also have the capability, as you know, recently added that we can, um, it's already uh, released, that we can now not only froze the header of the demand and not being able to pick other lines of your demand. So before we had this challenge as well where we had a work header and if we need to pick up, let's say, seven items for this, it was sales order 
space, let's say we are breaking the work by sales order, and the sales order has nine items, let's say, to be picked, and only one needs the replenishment. Then before days, we will close or lock or freeze all of the work, because freezing happened on the work header, so you will not be able to pick up the rest of the lines. Well, that has been solved as well. So we will see that in the demo, you can set up uh, your own choice if you want to freeze the line, which will then uh, enable you to pick eight of items that can be picked and then wait for the nine to be replenished to be picked, but you are not stopped. You're not kind of prevented to, to pick the rest of the items. And that goes the same for the demand replenishment setup through the work templates. I will show that. So I think this will be the big uh, improvement for everybody who is running raw material uh, picking for the manufacturing uh, and, and with the other improvements that we have done in the areas of manufacturing integration into the warehouse, it is becoming a more and more complete solution. So where it applies, well, a wave template can now be created, as it says here, um, basically um, for raw material picking and demand replenishment. Uh, so method can be added now for production orders and canvas, as I said. So just to be completely clear, it is support both for canvas and production orders, as we will see in the setup. The capabilities fully correspond to the capabilities for sales order picking and transfer order picking, as we said before. Um, so now, when this set, you should kind of remember what I said, because I will repeat all of that in the demo uh, again. Uh, so you will see that, but before that we will go through the goody part and uh, after we have touched how it is set up. So the way we set up, it's exactly the same as the demand replenishment for the wave uh, template uh, for the um, sales order, for instance. So we will just add a method uh, for replenishment and then we will uh, use it as exactly as we do for the sales order relating to the location directives and work templates and then being able to move items from a replenishment locations to a picking locations. Um, uh, now we are going into the today's extra goodie and it is closely related. It has just been basically developed and it KB article it's already issued uh, so it is backported for R3 as well where we have done a feature called immediate replenishment. Now you probably ask yourself what is immediate replenishment. Well, it is respecting restrict by unit uh, among some other things. And so as it says, it, is, uh, it will be a part of the default release 73 for release. And also it has been released as a hotfix and a KB for 2012 R3. Now what is immediate replenishment? As the system was designed, when we had a demand, it will, let's say we are, uh, we need to, um, pick 150. On the sales order line, it says pick 150. We are picking one pallet, and we are picking 50 from uh, each area. And if we assume that, uh, maybe a better, better example will be if we say we are picking 150, 100 is a box, and 50 is 50 each, so box needs to be picked from the box area, and the each are picked from the manual each area. And if you imagine that these boxes are basically handled by the mini loader, let's just say it's so automatic warehousing system, which will fetch the box in a very quick way and a, a number of boxes that we calculate and then the rest will be picked from the each area manually by the warehouse employees. Now we invest in equipment for a reason uh, and if you imagine how the location directives have been set before, we didn't, we, we were not able to do this because what we will do normally, we will set up the location directives saying please first restrict by unit a box. So there will be a separate line or a path that goes to the box area, which in our case will be in the mini loader. And then it will say the next line will be handling each, so you go to the each area for the rest of the quantity. So if we have this example 150, that's a one box and let's say each, what will happen is that system will say, okay, by the unit of measure in the system, I can calculate that this is the one box and 50 each. Through my location directives, the workflow, it will say, well, I need to pass my box to this area and pick up from there, which is a mini loader, and then 50 just from it. So let's assume that there is nothing in the mini loader, or it could also be a manual area, doesn't matter, where we have some equipment and people hired to pick up the boxes. 
and if they, we are missing some boxes because we need to replenish with a new pallet there. What system will do if it fails to allocate boxes from the box area, as it was before, it will pass that quantity just to the next line, when in our case will be each path, so the line that is leading to the path of each, and showing us where the locations are where we pick eaches. But now, picking from eaches will not anymore be a 50, but 150, it will try to allocate 150. And now you can imagine if you have had the need of 10 boxes, that could potentially be 1,000, and if it fails, it will just pass that quantity to the line level, where the eaches are to be picked, and somebody will suddenly be asked to pick 1,050 eaches, which will cause a trouble in the each uh, piece picking area. So, to avoid that, we want to respect this restrict by unit and fix it through the location directors. And why, you ask yourself, why did system uh, allocate first at the end? Because in the wave, as you remember, the method, it's one that is basically at the end of the wave processing almost, which means that when it starts through the location directors saying, try to pick boxes from box area, oh, there is no any, it will then continue to the trying of the lines, which will be each, and if it fails to figure out that there is no 1,050 eaches in the piece picking area, which will be a normally true, then it will generate, first there it will generate a replenishment. But now, replenishment will not end into your, um, uh, the box area, it will end with a big probability into your each area. So now, you are bringing a large amount of goods to the each area, being replenished there, because you have this demand of 1,050 that was transferred to the each area and waits to be replenished. That, is, that was at some customer facilities causing big problems. And of course, when we have this nice restrict by unit and unit measure calculation, transitions and whatnot, we also want to respect that with the replenishment. So we decided to fix that, and we did something we call immediate replenishment. So it will allow you to replenish inventory right after allocation directive line fails. So in my example, when the box allocation, allocation of boxes fails, instead of if set, instead of going with the quantities to the lower lines, it will just say, no, I replenish this immediately. And then you can have a, your own separate replenishment set to replenish that area, and the rest of each, is, in our case 50, will be continue to be continue to be picked from the each area. So basically, you are making sure that, yes, I want boxes to be picked in the box, packaging material from the box area, and I have now a possibility to do replenishment of that. And each is exactly the same. It could be some other reason why you want to connect a, one, a single replenishment template to one of the lines. So we have broad replenishment from the bottom of the wave into the lines level in the location directory. It's just, it is a very good feature. So now, where does it apply? Immediate replenishment is used during wave execution, if a location fails for a location directive line that has a replenishment template set, we will set, we will see what it's that set in the system. How it is set up, we will see that we, when you open location directive on the line, now we have a new field, it's the drop down menu where you can basically select from your existing uh, replenishment templates that are set, and then that one will be used if uh, for some reason units cannot be allocated in our example was boxes. And now you're probably asking yourself, what if I have set immediate replenishment, I select the replenishment template, everything fine, it fails, it should have used that replenishment template, it tries, but my setup of replenishment was wrong, because, you know, you need to set up location directives for replenishment and so on. So let's say that setup was incomplete, so it's wrong. What will happen, right? It's a very good question. That will be an exception to be handled, but what will happen? We have decided not to stop the process, so if for some reason, the re immediate replenishment of that unit of measure fails on that line. That could be because you don't have goods to replenish boxes anymore from, from that place where the boxes are or pallets, or that your setup is wrong, simply that it doesn't work. So what we will do in that case, we will then pass the quantity of, in our case was in the beginning 100, later if 10 boxes it will be 1,000, to the each area. So we will not prevent picking, we will pass it to the each area, and you will, in your log, see that it failed to replenish, and you will then, for the next time, correct your setup or make sure that there are goods to replenish with. But our process continues, but it will first pass the quantity now if the immediate replenishment fails. Good. Now we can go to the machine, and I hope uh, 
that it's still alive. So let's just test that part. Um, <clears throat> so it is. And we will start from the raw material replenishment, demand replenishment, to see how that is set up. And we know that it's set up on the wave. So wave templates. Sales order demand replenishment. So here we have a um, wave template, and if we edit the wave template now, and we add a new one called raw material replenishment, oh, sorry, and we do exactly the same here, and I do that for site 2 and warehouse 24, oh, And in my methods, I do, uh, I could say usually this is the old stuff, if I want to process it automatically or not, and so on. But under the method, that's the interesting part. So um, now you see I'm creating for the shipping, even that I'm calling it raw material replenishment, and we see that it has containerization replenishment. But what we need to do here, we need to change to the production order, and then do exactly the same. So let me just... So now I'm constructing for the type you see here, production orders, right? Wave template type. And it will be for the site 2, 24. And then it's there. And then I will move all of my, uh, so we need first to say once, and then everything is moved, all of my default. But look here, and I do this on purpose. I have made system to not show you method here, and then you will ask yourself, but how can I, it doesn't work. Yes, it does. And you should be, this is a tip, if you don't see the methods here, you need to regenerate them. So let's just find the methods. Um, this is my test machine, so my search, it's not, let's see if it found my methods. No, but I can do waves. Uh, I can go to my warehouse management, and under the waves, oh, let me just see, where do we have to, here, here it is, wave, it was a correct, wave process methods. So you see here, I have production, create work in Kanban, but I don't have uh, the, demand replenishment for production or demand replenishment for the Kanban. But I can regenerate this. And now I get Kanban replenishment and my production replenishment added. So going back to the waves, wave template, you will see now that if we go to our production order and we do exactly the same, here it is production replenishment that that can be added. So we added this one, we mark the production replenishment and we add it. And you see it is the, the last one before the work is created. So when we run through all of the loca allocations that I was explaining the reason why we introduced the goody one, which was the immediate replenishment. So, but now you can see that you can set up exactly the same way for uh, demand replenishment for the production and it will be exactly the same for uh, Kanban. So we can just prove that one as well. So if you're going to the Kanban, and now you see we have a one created, and I can edit this one, and I can just add to the Kanban as well my replenishment. So, oh, sorry. So here we go, save. Now, uh, we are going also to see, I mentioned once that you should be aware of that we can now set up uh, work to be frozen when we have demand replenishment of both level of line and level of the header. So where is that done? Let's go to the wave, not template, but the work templates. Because as I said, you want to continue to pick rest of the items, not to stop picking of the items, right? Just because you need one that cannot be picked. So if we select one of the wave templates, like picking staging, this one, 
under the general and it please pay note that make note that it works differently you can set up differently from work template to work template so under the general i have a small but very powerful enum here which says block entire work order or block individual work lines now if i say block entire work order for this one it could have uh, its justification why we want to use that right so then you will say well i want to i don't want to start to pick this order at all if it has any replenishment right but i could have some other area dedicated area say no 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 i'm doing the picking it could be in, in the way that I want to pick rest of the items and then somebody will eventually solve this one and if it if it is sold while I'm picking other uh, uh, nine out of ten items let's say and the one it's blocked because of it needs to demand replenishment then it will be at the end as well asked to go there and pick it if a situation has been resolved or otherwise I can uh, I can choose to to continue without so and then if I want to do that, I will go to block individual work lines, which means it will be only the lines that are needing replenishment that will be blocked or as we call frozen. And until replenishment is done, they will be not unfrozen. And then we can continue with the other lines. So it's a very powerful feature to, 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 to remember. So now we want to cover a, a goodie part, which was the immediate replenishment. So if we go to the location directives, And under the location directives, we have implemented the feature here. It's called immediate replenishment template. So in this first case, it's a quite good case. The first one goes and pick up the boxes. And if I say, well, I want these quantities that are calculated that should be picked by boxes, I want to pick them from the area where I need boxes. And if I don't have them, I don't want to wait to finalize uh, itself and then do the replenishment, which will then end the and in this line or path here, no, I want to do it immediately. So what I will do, simply I will edit this one and have ability now to select from the range of my already existing demand replenishment. So also gives you the power of basically tell the system this is the one to use. So we are now connecting the lines of the location directors basically with the dedicated uh, demand replenishment templates, which is a very powerful in itself. So I will select this one. So now what will happen, as I said, if we run demand and it says it needs 10 boxes from this path and goes down here. And please pay attention that if I had more than one action down here, so like more than one, several actions, it will first start replenishment, obviously, when the, all of the actions have been um, run through uh, and, and try to be used to allocate the items, right? And then at the end, it will start replenishing areas as defined in the location directives for demand replenishment to that area and then passing the other unit which will be each to the each area somewhere else so it's a really really powerful feature now uh, if for some reason as i said this demand replenishment template it's set up not correctly which could be it could miss location directives or work template or something so it simply fails even that i as a user think that this is set up correctly because i could select one replenishment template. in that scenario we will log that it failed but we will not stop of course because we want customers to be able to pick up the goods so what we will do we will take that quantity that was supposed to be picked from there and pass it to the next line that could be smaller boxes or each's or so on and the next line does not have immediate replenishment it could but it does not not have, and if you have set up your replenishment method, which is also required for this one, at the end of your wave template, then this one will also do the replenishment, but you can still say which one, if you have one, have the dedicated or, or specific demand replenishment template to be used, you can still select it from the drop down. Uh, so this is basically how it works. And I think that it's quite clear. So, uh, these are the little bit about uh, replenishment uh, and such. So let's go to the replenishment template. Save this guy here. And then go to the replenishment template. <laughs> so in the replenishment templates, we have a one demand replenishment template. This is the one that we selected because it was the only one of type wave demand. 
it, it, we selected it directly into the immediate field benchmark, as you remember. So if I now edit one, what we need to pay attention to is these two checkboxes. The one was the one I was explaining, saying, please allow wave demand to use unreserved quantity. So if wave have set up this demand to, let's say, replenish in each, in, in pallets, so I need 10 boxes, but I'm, I want to move a pallet. So obviously there might be some boxes that are not reserved on that demand replenishment and are not relating yet to any demand. Any new demand that we release could be attached to that unreserved quantities that maybe not, it's not moved yet. It's just existing work or in process. It works also in open, in process, and of course, when it's closed, when the goods arrive from the area. Then you need to check up this box in order to do so. And it will minimize amount of the demand replenishment work lines, of course, and it will also make sure that you're not getting uh, too many goods uh, because you are replenishing by the certain unit into your picking area because you might simply lack space for it. And as you know, we also have a feature, if you should do so, and you start piling the stuff in your picking area, we have the feature that we released in our spring release, and it was a part of the full release last year as well, which was the move of the work with the work, sorry, move of the items with the LPs for the work associated, uh, which means that that will make sure that if I'm bringing the pallet to the picking location, I say, well, there's something there still, but Obviously, it's a part of some work because that's why I'm bringing the new pallet, for instance, to the location. I can simply, even that that demand work exists on that existing pallet, I can move it wherever I want and my work lines will be updated accordingly, which is also a very powerful feature. So now we have basically covered a lot of things about demand replenishment. So let's recap. We've covered that now we have demand replenishment for raw material, which is a Kanban and production orders, uh, which is a very powerful thing. For the, for the production uh, integration into the warehouse. And we also have now covered that we have this immediate replenishment now, which is restricting by unit, respecting restrict by unit, and can now have a dedicated, uh, like a connected directly the replenishment template. And we also have been thinking, talking a little bit about these replenishment templates here. And we also have said that in the case of the demand replenishment that we can basically freeze the, 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 the work on the header level order lines for each of the work templates as we as we wish. So going back to the presentation, let's do so. Um, and we were on this side. Uh, I just want before I open for question, I just want to tell you that we have three excellent uh, websites that I think everyone should visit uh, frequently. The first one on the top, it's the blog, uh, basically blog MSDN site for our team called Dynamics AX SEM. And here the team is releasing a lot of uh, blogs, which we try to be as explain as detailed as possible. We are always starting with a challenge, business challenge, how it is sold and step by step with the screens procedure, how to set it up and use it. So people are big fans of these blogs, and we will start, or, sorry, continue to, to write as much as we can. And if you should see that something is missing, do not hesitate to contact us. Uh, then we have a roadmap site, which is official site, where we do update what we have done recently. It's a kind of three-step uh, updating. Uh, you get updates in three steps. First, what team has achieved uh, recently, what team is working on, and what will team be working on in the soon, in, in the future, near future. And it's, it's not only for the warehousing and distribution and the TMS team, it's also for the rest of the Dynamics 365 for finance operation teams. Uh, so please do so and look what we are going to work on. We are working agile from our backlogs. And if you disagree, then you will go to the uh, last site, which is an idea site launched not that long time ago, where we do uh, basically give ability or possibility to all of the partners and customers to go in and create the, their ideas and suggestions what we need to change. And then other people can vote of each of the suggestions and also the comments can be written. We are monitoring this. Uh, I think all of the teams of Dynamics 365 for, for finance operations have been asked to monitor this and we do that for sure. And it is basically directly impacting. It's one of the sources that we are using to basically 
prioritize our backlogs, what features to work on next. So it is possibility for you to give your voice directly and steer in what direction uh, and what features we, we will build for you. Um, so do not hesitate to add, please, any ideas you might have what we need to improve. And I'm sure that you as an expert, uh, expert with experience from field have uh, suggestions. And other people will vote on that. Uh, you will see us answering these as well if we see that there are some workarounds or you can do something else or even that we say that we have already released the feature. So we are commenting as well from the R&D group uh, this. So with this, I would like to uh, open for questions. Great, thanks Mirza. So folks, while you're typing in those questions, I would like to call your attention to the survey link that I posted in the messages window. Your feedback is very valuable to us. It helps us build better events for you in the future. Copy that link and paste it to a new browser. Enter your email and you'll be taken to the survey. There's five questions and our voting scales on a scale of one to five, with five being the best score possible. Be sure to click on the Submit button at the bottom to ensure that your feedback has been received. And with that, um, folks, again, go ahead and type your questions in. I do have one here from Christoph. He asks, is immediate repl replenishment based on the demand replenishment? Uh, yes. Excellent. So, so I will just repeat. So the question is, what kind of replenishment it is. As we saw in my demo just before, I had three uh, replenishment templates created. One was of type demand replenishment and two have been of type min and max. Min and max can only be triggered by the bad job, as you know, and that's how it is today. And it will still be like that uh, for now. And immediate replenishment, you could see when I opened my drop down menu that I had only one choice. And the reason being because there was only one of type demand replenishment, so yes. It's only for the demand replenishment. Great. And that was all the questions that we've gotten so far. You did such an awesome job. Uh, any closing remarks before we conclude today's event? Do you want to give it another couple seconds for more questions? Yes. Yeah, so let's just uh, leave one minute or two for people to have a chance to ask. Do not hesitate to ask any questions you might have, please. Okay. Perfect. So again, folks, now's your chance. Any questions, go ahead and type them there into the conversation, into the, uh, to the white box, and then go ahead and click on send. All right, with that, we're still not getting any questions. Uh, Mirza, any final words here? Please uh, do give us as much feedback as you can through the Yammer groups, through the Roadmap Dynamics.com, Ideas Dynamics.com, and also comment our blogs, and uh, let's do our best for our customers. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the recorded portion of today's partner web conference. Again, the recording will be available at the same registration site within 24 hours. I'd like to extend a big thank you to our presenter Mirza, and thank you audience for logging in and joining us today.